Hello and good day. I'm JSC, and that's Kelly Calabrese. Hey. <laughs> a, big, a big hello to you. So you're in uh, Argyle, Texas. I am. And let everyone know exactly where the heck that's at. It is a suburb that is northwest of Dallas, not far from the DFW airport, what they refer to as the Metroplex. Okay. I've heard that term before. And yeah. um, if people have been watching these uh, video training sessions for a while, they know I'm here in Orange County, California. And uh, we're located basically halfway between L.A. and San Diego and about 15 miles inland from Laguna Beach. If that's kind of <laughs> gives you some perspective of where we're at. Sometimes it's just kind of helpful to kind of gain some perspective like that. Okay, so the topic of this video training is our fitness boot camps dead. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Um, it's so funny when I, when I hear this stuff because um, there's always speculation. Everyone has an opinion about what works and what doesn't work. Uh, what's the trend and what's the lifespan of a trend and um, how to make the most money with the least amount of hours invested while giving the most impact to different people or living the best fitness lifestyle or do you need a facility? Um, you know, what kind of brand recognition is necessary? All that kind of stuff. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of, of, of speculation on things. And, and, and there's some truth to a lot of these different things, but there's also a lot of BS mixed in. So what, what I'd like to do is... Uh, separate fact from fiction, uh, throw out the BS, give the facts, uh, and, and obviously the facts as, as, as we know them to be, um, but it, a lot of it's based on statistical information, so it, it is factual. Some of it is obviously opinion, so I want to I declare that now. Um, and so I want your first thoughts on the growth of fitness boot camps, the longevity of fitness boot camps, and what is your thought on people who are saying that it's all over? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you really want to know my thoughts, John? That's actually what really inspired me to call you because I actually took some time of my life and watched some of these videos, and I'll never get that time back. <laughs> so I've watched some of these people, and I'm going, really? Because I'm sitting here, and solidly, my camps are still making healthy six figures every year without a whole lot of effort and not really doing a whole lot differently. So it's probably like a lot of other industries. There's always going to be people in the top 10% who are going to excel, no matter what. It doesn't matter what the economy is doing. I mean, walk into the Apple store today. There is no economy problem there. So there's always going to be people who are doing very, very well. And I think the ones who are doing it right, like a lot of the folks that we know, are growing, are seeing more people. I mean, check out some of the Facebook pages of some of the top boot camp coaches. You'll see the pictures. They've got 50, 60 people in camp. They've got four camps, five camps, 10 camps. So there's definitely still people doing it very, very well and growing. Are there a lot of bad ones? Have we all seen lots of them pop up and go away? Absolutely, yes. I don't believe they're dead. I believe the future is still bright. I believe they will be around for a very long time. I can tell you that 95% of my boot campers renew every month. Literally, if somebody doesn't renew, either they moved away, their house burned down. Uh, they, I mean, it's something major. And the cool thing is that a majority of them come back. Some just come in the summer or some come after they've had a baby and they're away for a season. But they, if you are doing it right, you should have 95% of your people renewing and new people coming in all the time. You know, I want to I want to talk about what type, and I'm not going to talk about any brands because there's been so much about all this stuff, and and we we all have our opinions and all that stuff. So I'm not going to talk about a franchise or the licensing models or other ideas. I'm going to talk about just some fundamental things that are kind of generalizations. The the boot camp that is done in a health club by a group exercise instructor who has no boot camp training probably burns a lot of calories. And it's probably at least moderately fun. And it's probably better than the step class that you had been doing <laughs> since you wore leg warmers in that step class. But that doesn't mean that it is a true boot camp. It doesn't mean that it is an optimal boot camp. It doesn't mean that it's structured uh, uh, efficiently or effectively. And it, it doesn't perhaps have the right environment to be a boot camp. 
You know, right. I mean, talk about boot camp, I'll just interrupt real quick. It's not a class. Like you said, it is a program. It is a system. Yeah. And that's what makes it different than just being, oh, looking at the schedule going, do I do Zumba or do I do boot camp? Boot camp, when done correctly, the way it's designed to be done is a complete system and program. It's not just a class. Uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't even going there, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is. And it's, it's also, it's a culture. And, and the culture yeah. is what makes the system work. And it's interesting because a lot of these other videos I've done recently uh, with people in, in all different perspectives and, and business models in the fitness industry all talk about the culture. Mm -hmm. And and the uh, the culture that is created by the brand, by the way the instructor teaches, the personality of the instructor. Um, but you, it's hard to have a culture when there are multiple instructors that drop in to teach a boot camp in a health club. I, I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying it's far less likely. That, that culture can be consistent when people are in and out and are, are don't they, the thing is, even if they teach a good class, even they might have 50 certifications, but if they don't have the vested interest in their heart and their mind for building the culture of the boot camp, then it's just a group exercise class with um, a name and, 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 and maybe some dog tags. You know, I mean, that's, that's you know, I'm being, I'm being a little cynical here, but but you know, can, can you can you can I get an amen? Can, can amen. You, can, can you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying that they teach a class that's unsafe. I'm not saying that they're not nice people. I'm saying that when you have different instructors that come in to teach a class that's always indoors. I'm not saying there's there's a time for indoors, but but it's always indoors, and you're just doing group exercise and calling it boot camp and still listening to something that has a perfect 120 or 140 beats per minute. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's just, it's not a boot camp. It's just, it's just not. So, so I, I've surveyed my people, John, and I've asked them, what is it about boot camp that you love? And I give them all these different things. And of course they can fill in their own. And the first thing is always the instructor, which is flattering and nice. But the second thing, Hands down, by a majority, landslide is being outside. Mm. They just love being outside more than anything else. And a majority of them, at least my people, they have health club memberships. They go there to use the sauna, <laughs> the steam room, <laughs> and they're, they're not engaging in the fitness there for whatever reason. That's not just a culture that they enjoy when they have the opportunity to be outside. So by far, that's one of the leading reasons why boot camp has been so successful and people keep renewing. And I think also when we talk about people succeeding or failing with a fitness boot camp, it's, it, it's like this. Um, if, if you want to learn yoga, you can be the best personal trainer in the world. But if you don't know how to do Chaturada, I can't even say it, Chaturada Dandasana, <laughs> Uttanasana, uh, sun salutations, if you, can, if you don't know how to do that stuff, how to pose, how to breathe, how to do the flow, how to cue. It doesn't matter how well you do barbell bicep curls. It's irrelevant. And the same is true for Pilates or for kettlebells. You know, like, I'm not a kettlebell guy. There's no way I'm gonna go teach kettlebells. I don't understand it. I mean, hardly at all, okay? So, so for me to say I'm gonna go do a kettlebell thing is foolish. But I do understand boot camp. And I know that we had to go seek knowledge and then develop this system so that it, you can take someone who is a sports coach, who was a group exercise instructor, or maybe still is, a personal trainer, and learn how to take those fundamental skills and put it into a boot camp. It is unique. You can't, you know, a cheerleader could probably teach some tumbling and gymnastics, but they, they better learn some gymnastics too, but they can probably learn how to communicate effectively with the people. So you can carry that stuff in but you have to have specific skills, knowledge, and, and now even credentialing to, to be able to teach a boot camp well. And I think sometimes we see people fail with boot camps where people say, oh, it's not working, or I put so much effort into this, it's not working. It's because they haven't done the due diligence and the things that are necessary to become successful at it. They just want to hang their shingle and make a bunch of money. 
And there is a lot to learn. I can tell you when I first went through my training, I was shocked at how much there was to learn. In fact, friends of mine said, Kelly, are you kidding me? You're going to boot camp training? You've been in fitness for 20 years. Don't you know enough? Can't you just go out there and hang your shingle and do a boot camp? And I felt committed to it that if I can go and learn something and it saves me time and it saves me money, it will be worth it. And I learned a ton. And I can tell you from then, what I've learned over the last six years has been huge. I mean, when I look back at my workouts and how I used to do things and the results people got, it has even evolved enormously in the last six years. So there is much to know to really do it right. And if you've ever taken, maybe you've gone and done a math class with somebody who's been great you can see the difference and you know what your people can too I can't even tell you how many people go oh, I bought a Groupon for this camp over there your camp is five times the price but it's worth it I understand I see why I see the difference I went over there and now I know why there are five bucks and you're 20 so you're, you're gonna get a lot of that because it takes a finesse and it takes work and you've got to be willing to put it in um. One of the uh, things that I've heard in some of these videos, and, and I'm not saying like that some of the points are valid. It's just that it doesn't always apply. I think is 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 the point I'm making. And one of the the one of the things that were were said was said was that you have to factor in setup and breakdown time and drive time and all that stuff. And and, and yes, that is true. That actually is is, is a, a factual statement. But when you do it right, it's not that big of a deal. What happens is the vast majority of the people do it wrong. So doing it wrong is not having a camp location which is fairly proximal to your home or your office. Probably your home is best. Uh, doing it wrong is having the wrong type of props and the improper setup and breakdown which does eat into your day. So you got to know what to do and, and where to do it and how to do it. So. That is actually true if you don't do it right. But if you do it correctly and efficiently with a proven system, you can set up in just a few moments um, and break down in just a few moments. And, you know, I mean, I, I taught my camp for eight years, nine years, and I, it was, you know, three minutes from my house, literally three minutes. I could set up in five minutes and break down in five minutes um, and make a really good income. Now, let me, let, me, let me say this too, because people say, if it's so great, why aren't you teaching anymore? Okay? <laughs> it's a valid question. And by, by the way, you still do and you have for many, many years. We're going to talk about how ridiculously successful you are. I, I've been teaching fitness since... Uh, 1992 when I started my business, but I actually had been teaching fitness since 1988. I'm that old, okay? So I've been teaching fitness since 1988, started my business officially uh, in 92, um, and taught camp for all those years. I have many, many other business interests, and, and you know, most recently, Nesta acquired a university, and you know, uh, Wexford University is launching in January of 2013. That required my time and effort. You know, I had to refocus. Uh, and so that's a reason why I can't do those classes anymore. So that, you know, I just want people to know to be like, well, if it's so successful, you're making all this money, why don't you, why don't you do it? That's the reason, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a point where I had to, I had to make a transition. Uh, what I can tell you is um, when I was teaching my class, I would average, let me get this right, about a thousand dollars an hour. I'd make about a thousand dollars an hour teaching my class, and it varied. Sometimes I made fourteen hundred dollars an hour, and sometimes it was down at seven hundred dollars an hour. But it's way more than you're going to make with one-on-one -on -one training. Um, and and so in, in your camp, you just told me before we started recording, you have sixty-three people, and they sixty-three people pay you four hundred dollars a month. Now you guys do the math on that, okay? Sixty. <laughs> Every four weeks. Yeah. Every four weeks. <laughs> That's well, good. four weeks on, one week off. In fact, okay. tomorrow starts vacation. Last okay. All right. so break, little, I'm so, from Colorado. So, so this break, I'm week. headed to New York. So, 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 so every week, you can get a break. I mean, you get a break. Ten and, weeks and you, here. Yeah. I, I, I want people to emphasize, or I want to emphasize to people that, um, you know, a lot of people that do camps don't make a lot of money because they, they don't do it right. It's not that the camp, that, that a boot camp doesn't provide opportunity. It's because they've been promised something that, didn't happen, or they didn't follow uh, a proven strategy, 
You know, and some people just don't have what it takes. You know, I mean, that's that's the reality. Some people don't have what it takes to be an Olympic athlete. Some people don't have what it takes to be um, a, a successful politician or or anything else. You know, so some people just don't have what it takes. So you got to factor all that in. Um, but I want to I want to talk a, a little bit about some things that help people become successful with a fitness boot camp. And one of the things we talked about was uh, creating the culture. You have to have the culture. Uh, you can call it your tribe. You can call it your family. Um, uh, you can uh, call it your, your group or whatever. There's a lot of different things. There's a lot of different strategies for creating that, that culture. Uh, but that is, that is essential. Um, and the other thing is, well, there's a lot of other things. But um, you have to constantly be promoting. And a lot of, a lot of people have unrealistic expectations that they can do, you know, buy, you know, a hundred dollars worth of Facebook ads and uh, target women in the proper age demographic in their community and they're going to fill up their camp. Or they put up a website but they don't understand search engine optimization and they're ranked at the bottom. Um, or they're going to hand out flyers at a local 5k and that's going to be enough to fill up their camp. Um, you know, also interesting because I, I was speaking to um, a friend of mine the other day, and he said that one of the things that people make a mistake on is they focus too much on getting the new clients, and they don't pay attention and honor the people who are they're currently serving and actually pay the bills. Yeah, that's a big mistake. <laughs> In fact, most of your new business will come from referrals from your existing clients, and your existing clients will stay. I mean, I've got clients there since the beginning, from six years ago, and a lot from five years and so on. They should be staying at least 10 months. I mean, it should be double that. But those are the ones that you really serve and show them your attention and get to know them and let them know that you care about them. I mean, there's just so many hurting, broken people out there that if you even just give them a little bit of attention, they're likely to come back. They don't want to miss. That's what you want to create. That's why that schedule of taking a break in between, they want you. They want to come back. They don't want to miss. And it gives everyone a break, but then they're ready to go again. That's why consecutive, you know, people have tried it. You've tried it. Other yeah. people have tried it. It doesn't really work. The people burn out. You burn out. But you want them to get to know you, miss you a little bit, and then really <laughs> want you again. That works well, really well. And, that, and, and from a psychological or neuro-linguistic perspective, that's called a takeaway. You, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you, people have something that they want, and then it's removed. And then their desire to have it again is returned. And, and then so they repeat the cycle. You need the mental break. You need the physical break. They need it too. And, and so, you know, we're talking about what fitness boot camp models work and which ones don't. I'm telling you, I'm going to say it again, direct the camera here. Continuous boot camp models do not work nearly as well as those that are cyclical in nature and allow people to have a periodic break. That's just the way it works. It doesn't mean that you can't set up a monthly... Uh, billing cycle, and then you, know, you can s still divide, you know, nine into twelve, and divide and figure out how many monthly payments that there'll be on a monthly cycle, uh, or or have them prepay it for a year in advance, or you know, there's a lot of different ways that that you know we teach uh, of how to do that, so you have the continuity income, but it is still broken down into an on-off cycle. That's what works. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Uh, uh, actually, well, I was going to say hundreds and hundreds. Actually, there are a few hundred <laughs> adventure boot camps do this, and, and it works. And, and ironically, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to say uh, who, but one, one, of, one of our camp operators I know for sure tried this uh, based on a suggestion from another person, and it almost put them out of business because they thought, well, I'm going to try it. Yeah, I got some advice. Um, everything crashed. It, and, 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 it's, and it happened. The thing is, uh, even though uh, the business was incredibly successful, as soon as that, that model was implemented, the revenue and the enrollment uh, dropped, I want to say 30, 40 percent. I don't know exactly, but I know it was pretty instant and pretty dramatic. Um, so don't do that, you guys. Don't, don't do a continuous boot camp. You can figure out a continuous billing cycle based on an on-off system. But you need a break. They need a break. It works better. 
And there's so many cool things about that off week, too. Number one, you can totally take off. Like, camp ends tomorrow morning. I'm getting on a plane. I'm going to New York for the week, and we're going to have a blast. And I'll come back, and my camp will be full, and it'll be fun. You can also use that week to, let's make some new music. Let's create some new workouts. Let's go out and, you know, go to a workshop, take a class, get together with some other coaches and come up with some new workouts. You can, you know, besides sleeping in, you can be promoting that week. There's so much that can go on in that off week to really rejuvenate you, refresh you, go read a good business book, go out and do some speaking. I mean, whatever you want to do in that off week, you really do feel freedom and refreshed and renewed. But I also know people who in that off week, they do a running program, they'll do a kettlebell class or they'll go to a studio and do TRX. I know people who actually make a boatload of money in that off week mm -hmm. because they choose to and their clients love them and they can charge them four times the price by doing either one-on-one -on -one or small group training. They just don't want to miss and that's fine if that's the season of conditioning that they're in. So there's definitely opportunity in that off week. In fact, John, you know I have a small studio that I opened a couple months back. 95% of my clients are former campers. Mm -hmm. So that's such an incredible benefit because once you get this tribe of people in, they know you, they love you, they want you, they don't want to consider other forms of training, they're going to call you first. If for whatever reason they can't do your camp at that time or that location, they're going to think of you first when they want to get back into a fitness program. So it just can feed into so many other areas of your fitness business, including all these are the profit centers. So if you have these people who know and love you and you tell them, uh, go buy this polar heart rate monitor, they're going to get it from you. And if you tell them this supplement or this cookbook that you've got an affiliate program for or come to this uh, grocery shopping tour that I'm doing, it adds, I'm not kidding you, you can add another $100,000 in income. I'm only saying it because I do it <laughs> and I've seen other trainers do it in those types of ancillary sales that come from this group of people who really honor you, trust you, know you, believe you, want to hang out with you, buy from you. So it goes so much beyond that registration that cheerfully comes in on the first of every month. I want to uh, talk a little bit about, you know, the, the life cycle of, uh, not a life cycle, <laughs> I want to clarify, but the life cycle of fitness boot camps and kind of the chronology of what's happened and, and then what we anticipate for the future. Um, and I've said this before in videos, but, but there's, always, there's always a misconception or misinformation. I, so I just want to emphasize a few things. Um, people have said, John invented fitness boot camps. I did not. It's not true. I popularized them. Um, I actually don't know who actually you know, you know, claims to have created it. It might be a former military person, I would imagine. Um, but I, I'm the one, I guess, I, I can uh, state claim to, I, I popularized them globally. Uh, and I would say systematized oh, as systematized. well. Okay. I don't know okay. another system yeah. that and, and, was out there before you came up with yours. Okay, that's fair. I'll, I'll, I'll go for that. that. <laughs> um, and, and now, you know, there's, there's hundreds of the Adventure Boot Camp uh, locations all over the world. There's obviously a lot of other systems and programs and licensing and franchising systems. Um, some of them are a lot better than others. Um, People say, well, you know, it's, it's oversaturated or it's, you know, it's dead. Um, it's not oversaturated and here's why. <laughs> because most of the people that suck at it are usually done sucking at it in about 90 days because their business fails. I mean, I, I may sound harsh, but it's, but it's true. I mean, the, I, I've seen them come and go and come and go and come and go. And, and I don't blame them for wanting to do it because it's fun, you get to help a lot of people and you make a lot of money. It's all good stuff. And, and you save a lot of time too. So I don't blame them for wanting to do it. So does the level of saturation last? Well, yes and no. It, there may always be other people, but they cycle in and out because, because a poor program doesn't last. So there are a lot of people doing fitness boot camps but there is also longevity of successful programs. Now, obviously, Adventure Boot Camp is very successful. There's other people who are in other systems and, and other uh, independent people who have been successful as well. And I'm not saying that's not possible. What I'm saying is a lot of people come into it really excited, think they got it figured out, may, may have spent a lot of money on something, and then it goes and it dies. So there's more people in it than there was five or ten years ago. But the people who are really doing it well continue to do well. Now, in, in my opinion, uh, I don't think we're at the peak, um, and we're certainly not at the end of it. 
it's you know it's evolving. Even Adventure Bootcamp has has evolved over time. Some of the things that we did before, you know, we we don't do anymore. We don't teach anymore. Mm -hmm. The uh, recruitment methods for people to you know to get new uh, clients or campers, as we call them, has changed over time. Um, you know, when we when I started this back in in two thousand, uh, there wasn't Groupon or Living Social. Um, but even if you do those, you still have to have a, a conversion strategy from your irresistible offer to your long-term thrilled client. There has to be a, a strategy in there. Um, otherwise, you're just um, having a lot of people come through and, and uh, testing stuff, which isn't necessarily helpful to you. Um, but I, I think there's a, a long a long bit of longevity. I'm trying to think. That, that didn't even sound correctly as I say that. There's a, there's a long way to go. And, and also, you know, we, you know, when you talk about group exercise in general, or a group exercise business model, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set you up for this, this question here. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, group exercise programs out there. Um, we saw this. Some people love fitness boot camp. Some people said, you know what, I'm not, I don't quite want to do that. I want to do group exercise, but I don't want to do it with that many people and I, I want the option to do it indoors and that's why uh, we developed impact as kind of a, a segue you could call it group personal training or small group fitness business or uh, kind of a, a hit type training for uh, a small group I mean, where, where do you think group exercise is going with that and I'm not talking about the group exercise that you do as a drop-in at a health club where you pay no extra and it's not a culture I'm talking about the culture in a, a themed, branded group exercise, which which could or could not be boot camp. I think it's here to say I've been doing paid group X literally for 25 years, and I will give that credit to my former partner, Don Brown, who really was one of the, the front runners in this. I remember getting five benches, five sets of power blocks, you know, five sets of bands, and doing these small classes that people paid for, and it was awesome. And they stayed at our club the longest, and they paid the most money, they were worth the most to us, they referred the most people. Those are the kind of clients that I want. Mm -hmm. And then we went into what now people know is sort of the curved circuit. We were one of the first ones to have that circuit, and we'd get 22 people in a room, high energy instructor, people would pay for it. And then those people would go into personal training or group training from there, and stay for the, I mean, three times as long as any regular member would be. There's definitely a need for this. More than ever, people are starved for time, they're starved for attention, they're starved for socialization, and this is such a connection for them. They don't want to think. They don't know what to do. They're so confused about fitness. They want something fun. They want something that makes them feel good, something that produces results. They want a cool instructor. They want to be able to say, oh, my instructor's in the newspaper, or my instructor, you know, coaches the cheerleaders, or, you know, my instructor's a big martial arts black belt guy or whatever it might be they they want to have a connection with a group they want to go with their friends make friends meet friends have a cool instructor and there's money out there that people are going to pay for something so why not provide something that is going to be effective that is going to be results producing and fun for people and an awesome system so I don't think it's going anywhere I mean there's you know all kinds of technology that people can get a workout on their smartphone and they can get a workout in Shape Magazine or somewhere else but they want the people they want the connection they want the leadership they can go buy DVDs and do them at home and there is a group of people who are very self-motivated who will do that successfully and there's a group of people who are very analytical and they will plug in their food and do all that but that's not the majority a <laughs> majority of people they need the inspiration for from the person who's keeping the accountability. Mm -hmm. now, somebody's going to go, okay, Mary, right. it's been two days. How come we haven't showed up at camp today? People need that. They want that. I don't think that is ever going to change, and people are willing to pay for it. And for me personally, I would rather go after the people that are willing to pay a little bit more. They're better customers. They're not price shopping. They can afford to keep coming back month after month. They worship you. They see the value. They're, they treat you like a professional. They treat you well. Those are the kind of clients that I would recommend that you attract, regardless of what your demographics are. There's people in every area that are looking for the best of the best. And that makes you better, which is you know, part of you leaving your legacy. You want to keep getting better because you've got better people and you want to keep taking it to a higher level. And you want to please them as much as they want to please you. Um, I was just thinking about something as you're saying this. What's really hot 
our transformation programs. Now, I've always used the word makeover, but people tend to use the word transformation now. It's becoming more highly searched on Google, whatever. I mean, transformation, makeover, body makeover program, life transformation. You can bundle it a lot of different ways, and you can add in nutritional supplements and dietary co uh, coaching, uh, wellness coaching. <clears throat> but the, the, the hub of the transformation is group exercise. Um, so group exercise and boot camp, you know, it can evolve and that's okay, but having a fitness boot camp or a small group training program gives you the hub of operation to have a successful transformation program because it brings everyone together. You know, you can, you can determine the level of competitiveness within the environment. You know, if you don't want to do transformation programs, you don't have to have competitiveness in your camp. Some people like that and some people don't. And, and uh, we teach you different ways of, of you know, implementing that or, or, or not. Um, but because transformation programs are so popular, they're really social too, which is great because you can use all this on Facebook and, 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 and do different things. And, you know, let me, let me just say this too, Kel, because um, people wonder, well, how do I even manage a transformation program because you know how do I keep do I use a spreadsheet or whatever um, fitness business ninja is a, a software program that we launched I don't know a few months ago now and the vast majority of the people who use that system are also using it to manage their transformation programs there are mo there's a module built in just for transformation programs so regardless if you use adventure bootcamp or impact or you're doing your own thing or you're with another system and you're thinking, well, how do I, how do I manage all this? And, you know, like, I want to plug in values for uh, body composition and body weight change. And then we do a mile run, and, and some people did the Spartan race, and uh, we did a, a mud run. And uh, some people got, we had uh, someone come in, and they checked serum cholesterol. We want to add that value in. We're going to do circumference measurements. Uh, uh, we want to do a sit and reach. We want to do a burpee test, or whatever it is. You can plug in or you can use the set values, or you can plug in any of your own values and compare everyone, and it's all mobile, and it's in real time, and you can do screenshots of the progression of the contest, put it in your blog, put it in your newsletter, put it on Facebook, and people can see in real time what's going on. It has this incredible social value to your group exercise program. You tag the people in it. Um, you can have uh, contests for the people who share this, this statistical information for your group exercise transformation contest. Um, you know, regardless if, if you use our systems or not, this is just a really cool tool which is super affordable that allows you to manage transformations. And, you know, I love technology. I, I totally dig on all that stuff. And it was fun working with the programmers, putting all this together. I think for me, as, as a business professional, I'm... I'm saying, well, how can we use this not only to make our business easier, but to help grow the business and serve more people? And, and for me, the, it's the simplicity of uh, everyone can see it, everyone can use it, it's totally mobile, but then taking that screenshot of the progression, it's like a, it's like a race, you know, and you're seeing the bars and the graphs, uh, you know, shoot up or out, you know, whatever uh, graphical representation you're using, numbers, facts, figures, and you can do it each day and you can do a post and people can see that and they get involved and they share it with their friends and that becomes a recruitment tool simply by doing a screenshot of the progression of your transformation contest. So regardless of what you're doing, um, it's, it's, it's just an easy way to do it and plus you save time. Which like it's like the boot camp down the street is not using that. <laughs> and your clients are going to be impressed. They're going to be like, whoa, you know, look at all this. This is cool. And there's going to be people who are into it and they want to track and they want to see. And they're sending it to their coworkers and they're sending it to their sister across the state. And they, they think that stuff is just cool. You know, whether they use it and get into it or they don't, it's just really neat to know that you're super professional. You're using it. You've got it. And these are some of the things that differentiate your boot camp. And they can see why they're paying a little bit more. They're like, oh, well. You know, there was an assessment before that was pretty comprehensive, and there was an assessment after that showed me my improvements over time, and there was a nutrition seminar, and there were some daily emails, and there was this really cool contest, and I got to track my results, and, you know, my whole family got in on it, and that's the experience. That's the culture. That's what we're talking about, that 
the things that make the difference in just showing up and doing squats and push-ups and running running across a parking lot. Um, so these are some of the things that really differentiate your camp. If you have something like Fitness Business Ninja and you're doing assessments and you're doing food logs and you are offering nutrition seminars and you're sending a daily email, guaranteed the boot camp down the street is not doing that. And they might only charge five bucks less than you are. So for five bucks more, people can absolutely see the difference. Besides, you want to have better workouts. You want to have better energy. You want to have good communication with your people. All of these things are things that make the experience and separate it. If they just show up at camp and you're really, they don't feel like the instructor even knows, notices, cares, didn't interact with me, they're gone. I can tell you, it, it takes effort for them to get there. And there's an investment for them and many, many resources in their lives to make it there. And they've got a lot of other options. So you've got to do whatever you can to make it a great experience. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be exhausting on your part. As John said, you just really need to be organized. You've got to have your music ready. You've got to have your workouts ready. You've got to have your equipment ready. You've got to be prepared and you've got to look like it. So you've got to be a professional and really step it up so that there is a difference and people can know it, see it, feel it, hear it, taste it, smell it in every way. So that the moment that they decide, okay, I'm going to start working out, they call you first. Uh, I, I want to emphasize something too. Um, we're not saying don't do one-on-one -on -one training because some people just love it. And if that's your thing and you don't want to do anything else, then stick with it because you know if you're that passionate about it, you're probably also pretty good at it. Um, there are times when one-on-one -on -one training is going to be necessary as opposed to group exercise or fitness boot camps. If it's pre or post uh, rehabilitative, um, if uh, you know, maybe someone is in the latter stages of, of a pregnancy, um, if they're uh, recovering from whatever, uh, and maybe they just, their form, they need help, some individual help on their form, or maybe they just need to focus just on core stability and, and trunk rotation, you know, so they can actually just have some fundamental understanding of movement before they move, they go into something else where uh, they're going to probably want to ask more of themselves in a group environment which may or may not be appropriate for them. So there are times when one-on-one -on -one training is best for people. And you can still make a good living doing one-on-one -on -one training. And, and I think, you know, I, I don't want to discredit any one thing. I think, I think there's merit in, in all of it. What we wanted to emphasize in this video training is that, you know, some people are saying fitness boot camps are dead and, and it's just not so. When they're done, improperly, they will fail. There, there's no doubt it will fail. And, and you'll spin your wheels and you will spend extra time and money and effort and have far less to show for it. But when you have a proven system and you're a good person and you genuinely care and you have a marketing system to support your efforts, if you um, uh, also uh, do the transformation type of thing as part of your camp, you don't have to, but it definitely, it definitely helps. I mean, it's been proven over the last few years that that definitely helps. And a group exercise program or a boot camp provides the best opportunity for you to work with the most people to create the right culture to have the best possible result for a profitable and successful transformation program. Um, I'm going to emphasize one thing, Kel, and I'm going to have you um, talk about it, and then we're going to we're going to wrap this up. Um, even though we have a proven system, you know, like with Impact or Adventure Boot Camp, and, and, and we know what works. We also know that you can't ignore people's individual experiences uh, or prior training. So as an example, you know, we, we do know what works. It is the, the most successful, longest running, most success stories, uh, most financial success stories uh, of our, our boot camp owners uh, of any system in the world. That's, that's undeniable. And, and that being said, we also honor and respect what comes before and after the training that they would, someone would get with us. So if someone has a, a yoga certification, add a little bit of yoga to your camp. If you're a martial arts instructor, add some punching or kicking or, or martial arts conditioning. Um, if you have other skills, maybe you're a sports coach. You know, maybe you did gymnastics or something like that and there's some fundamental actually I don't think you're gonna have people doing uh, you know round off back handsprings I don't think that's gonna happen but but there are some things that you can do to take that previous training and implement it into a successful camp so don't don't deny your past experience I just wanted you to maybe some cite some examples 
Okay, well, you know, I definitely encourage people to take a look inside because this is so instructor dependent. It is so dependent on the coach. So what is it about you that's different? What is the advantage of training with you? What experiences do you have that position you as the best coach for that person? And no two people are alike. So you might think, well, I only have a Pilates certification or I'm only a trainer. Oh, there's something about you that's different. Maybe you are certified in personal training, but you've lost 50 pounds. Or maybe you're you know, certified in yoga, but you were in a car accident and you completely rehabbed it. Or maybe you are you know, new to boot camp certification, but you coach gymnastics in college. Or there's something about you that's unique to your experience that is going to attract somebody who wants to have you as their coach. So put those things out there. Make sure that that's available in your marketing, on your website, so that people can see and make that connection. So when they get to your website, they go, oh, you know, they're certified as a life coach also. I mean, that, that could be huge for somebody. Oh, they also have nutrition certification. Wow, I didn't realize that I could get that kind of help here as well versus the guy down the street who, you know, I don't know what his credentials are. They've got a boxing background. They boxed in the Navy. Wow, that might be really cool. So think about what it is that you've done. What are your passions? Do you run marathons? Or are you a triathlon coach? And you know, we know, of course, at Nesta, if you don't have this certification, you can go there and you can find it. They've got, got the covered. most interesting, just incredible certifications at nestacertified.com. So I personally encourage you to go out and continue learning and get some more certifications so that it differentiates you even more. You know, you need to maybe not be so generic. If being generic, saying everybody's welcome, even though everybody is, has not been working for you, you might need to niche a little bit and not be so much of a generalist, even though you might not turn anybody away. You might take a seven-year-old man with diabetes, and if you have the ability to make that work with your group, then great. In fact, that happened to me earlier this year, and the guy's lost 53 pounds, and he's off five of his six medications, and diabetes is no longer an issue. And when I saw him the first day, honestly, I was like, oh, I hope this guy <laughs> sticks with it, because I know if he does, it'll be great. But so think about you know, what is it that your camp offers that is going to be a little bit different that you as a coach can provide that nobody else on the planet can do? And, you know, people might say, well, I'm shy or I don't have this. Don't think that way. There's something that you have that you do that's going to attract people. And if it's not quite developed yet, then you need to go out and work on it. Well said. Kelly Calabrese, thank you so much. You guys, um, we'll have, we'll have, uh, links and you know information below this video on the blog so if you're interested we're happy to help you and if you're just interested in this information then we're glad uh, that you watched and we hope that it serves you well uh, we have lots of programs products and services that can definitely enhance your fitness business oh, I know the one, one last thing I was gonna say before we wrap this up you mentioned maybe you have a life coach certification maybe you have a nutrition certification those two components added with a boot camp is a great formula for a transformation contest because yeah. there's always psychological, emotional components to someone yeah. making it or not. And obviously, nutrition is a huge part of it. Yeah. So having those two additional skill sets in addition to your boot camp and then, and then managing it all with Fitness Business Ninja because there's actually uh, nutrition uh, software in, in there uh, and assessments in addition to the transformation contest you can put it all into to one thing and, and do the whole thing it works super well so um i'm excited about that i think you can tell uh it's, it's fun it's fun we're able to help people simplify their business and their lives and, and help more yes. people so links below information below and then if you guys want to see what kelly's up to kelly calabrese.com and i'll have your link below there as well awesome all right thanks cal and thank you guys for watching i appreciate it thank you